Hey guys, JT Shaver here with New Layer, and today I want to show you a crazy bright light from Nice Photo that's very nice. This is the Nice Photo HA3300B Mark II, and it is a 330 watt daylight balanced COB with a ton of things going for it and just a few things that could be improved. After spending a couple months with this light, I do think it's a viable alternative to the Godox VL300 and even the Aperture 300D Mark II. The design of this light kit has a lot of attention to detail, so first let's take a look at all the things that Nice Photo has done right. Before we even get to the light itself, the first thing that stands out is just how great the carrying case is. This case is rigid, it's well padded, and I love when cases have the logo and the branding color on them because it really makes it easy to know what's inside when the light is packed away with all kinds of other gear. This light is pretty beastly, but that's to be expected, and if you're looking in the 300 watt or more range, it's probably something that you're not really concerned with. The vast majority of this light is made of metal and the build quality is top notch. Its bigger size can actually come in handy when you're working with bigger modifiers. I tested this light with a 36 inch and a 48 inch softbox and it handled both like nothing was even attached. The mounting yoke is super sturdy and it has two tightening knobs instead of one like most lights. Both locking knobs have a high quality fabric washer as well as teeth for a really nice locked in connection without having to over tighten the knobs. I also have to say that after using them for a while, the Nice Photo soft boxes are some of my favorites. They do cost a little bit more, but they're super lightweight, which makes them really easy to handle and they put less stress on your lights. They also come with everything you'd hope for, including a carrying case of their own, two layers of diffusion, and a fabric grid. There's a couple other things about using modifiers with this light that I want to cover real quick. One is that the umbrella holder is on the side of the light rather than the bottom like most lights, but that's really not going to matter and it doesn't affect anything, it's just something to know. The second thing is that the stock reflector comes with a diffusion disc and that's a really nice touch and comes in handy for a couple reasons. The COB itself is only a couple inches in diameter, so by adding a 7 inch diffusion at the front of the reflector, you are going to get significantly softer light without losing much brightness. The other thing is that that diffusion disc is going to protect the COB a bit if you're shooting outside with a lots of bugs or other things flying around. Another thing that Nice Photo has done really well is integrated the AC adapter directly into the controller to make it one solid unit. Some lights like the Godox UL and VL series have separate AC adapters and controller units, so you end up having two bricks and two or three power cords. With this light, you just have a cord going from the wall into the controller and then a cord going from the controller into the light. The wall cable is a standard cord, which I always like, and the cable going from the controller into the light is the locking type, and one of the ends that goes into the light is 90 degrees, so that's just another nice attention to detail. The controller features two fully integrated V-mount battery slots, so you can easily run this without wall power. It also has Velcro straps on the V-mount adapter, so it just secures your batteries really well and you don't have to worry about them falling out. And because I know some people will ask, no, you can't use this light with one battery, you do need to have both installed for this light to work. To stay aboard the attention to detail train, the hanging strap for this controller is a lot nicer than some of the plastic or wire ones on other lights. It has a really secure quick connect clasp that's really easy to take on and off and it's just way stronger. There's also a clamp included that attaches to the side of the controller and clamps onto the light stand to keep the controller nice and rigid. It doesn't support the weight of the controller completely, the way you set it up is you hang the controller from the light stand and then the clamp just keeps it vertical and rigid so it's just easier to use and easier to move the light stand around without the controller swinging around and hitting things. It's a really nice system and I like it a whole lot better than just a hanging controller that I see on most lights. I don't want to get stuck on the controller forever, but the screen on this controller is a lot bigger and higher resolution than most. The control system is simple enough to use with just one knob and short or long presses of each button to get into the different modes. There are five built-in effects for fireworks, a flickering TV set, explosions, camera flashes, and lightning. The effects are all pretty basic and you can't really change any of the settings, but they might come in handy so it's worth noting. Considering how bright this light is and the fact that it has three cooling fans, the fan noise is pretty good. 
It's not quite as good as the Godox VL series of lights, but it's right on par with the SL Mark II series. It has different frequencies than the SL Mark II series, so it might sound louder or quieter depending on the speakers or headphones you're using, but I did compare the waveforms and the overall loudness is the same on both. I use the SL150W Mark II without any noise issues at all, so you should be good to go with the HA3300B Mark II as well. I'll play audio clips of the original Godox SL150W, the SL150W Mark II, the VL150, and the Nice Photo HA3300B Mark II, and I'll play them loudest to quietest just so you can hear the difference. I did boost the loudness on all of these audio clips just so you can hear them better. One last thing to note is that the controller for this light also has a built-in fan, but it's nearly silent, so you're never really gonna have an issue with that. As far as brightness and color accuracy go, this light is pretty much what I would expect. I tested it with the bare bulb from one meter using my Siconic C800 and got the following results. For the brightness, I got exactly 10,000 lux, which is the equivalent of F18 at 1 50th of a second shutter speed and ISO 400. For comparison, it's about one third stop brighter than my Godox VL200, while the Godox VL300 is about one half stop brighter than the VL200. So the Nice Photo HA3300B Mark II is right in between the VL200 and 300 in brightness. This light is marketed as being 5600 Kelvin, and when I measured I got 5870 Kelvin, so not as close to 5600 as some others, but not bad. More importantly, adding diffusion typically warms your light up significantly, so the fact that this one is closer to 6000 Kelvin bare bulb is actually something I prefer. I measured a CRI and TLCI of 96.8 and 96 respectively, and the R9, R13, and R15 values, which are most important for skin tones, were 97.4, 98.4, and 95.9, and those are all really great values. I also got a color correction number of one green, meaning this light has a magenta tint and would need a green gel to bring it back to neutral. LED lights typically turn more green over time and any diffusion you use will change the tint as well. So as long as it's within an acceptable range, which this light definitely is, then it's not something to worry about. And you can adjust for it using manual white balance in your camera or adjust it in post easily. For the TM30, I got an RF of 92 and an RG of 100, which I consider the very good range. Measured against the D55 daylight standard, I got an SSI of 72. Some lights that aren't quite this bright may hit 73 or 74, but it's pretty common for 300 watt plus lights to have a slightly lower score, so 72 is completely acceptable. If you want to see all the measurements I took for this light, I'll have a link in the description to my tool where you can compare lights from any brand. The last positive thing I want to say about this light is that it supports DMX remote control, the wireless remote control, as well as the mobile app. There is a QR code on the controller that helps you more quickly download the app, but at the time of my testing, I could only adjust the brightness. They are working on updating the app, but if you plan on picking this light up, just assume that the mobile app is not something you can use, and maybe in the future. So I've said a lot of great things about this light, but what's the catch? There are some downsides or quirks to this light that you'll definitely want to know ahead of time. The first and biggest one in my opinion is that this light only adjusts in increments of 10%. So instead of thinking about this light as going from 0 to 100%, you could really think about it like it's going from 0 to 10. This may or may not be important to you depending on the type of things you plan to use this light for, but the values of 1 to about 25% do come in handy, especially in more delicate lighting situations. At the same time, this light is geared for maximum brightness, so if you find yourself shooting in lower light, you probably already have a dimmer light for situations like that. The other thing is that the special effects are just listed as 1 through 5 and don't have any names, so unless you memorize them, you'll have to cycle through each one to figure out what they are. Obviously, you can cycle through these a lot more quickly than a light that has 15 or 20 special effects, but it would be nice to have a name instead of just a number. This light sells for $739 compared to the Godox VL300 at $749 or the Aperture 300D Mark II at $1,099. 
This light is similar to the Godox VL300, but I do think it excels in some little detail areas. Like the included reflector diffuser, the integrated controller and AC adapter, the dual locking knobs, and the built-in special effects. The main thing that the Godox VL series has over this light is just adjusting in increments of 1%. I don't know if that's something Nice Photo can fix with a future firmware upgrade, but if they can, it would eliminate any reservations I have about this light. So what do you think? Is this a viable competitor to other similar lights or is there something that's a deal breaker for you? Leave a comment and let me know what you think because I reply to every single one. I do gear reviews and other videos like this every week so make sure you hit subscribe and follow me on social media so you don't miss the next one. I'll also have links to everything I mentioned in this video and they are affiliate links but it doesn't cost you anything extra and it really helps me create more videos like this. That's it for now guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.